Hello my loves, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amy if you're brand new here and today I wanted to share with you my 2020 goals. My hair is pulled back because I got super hot wearing this beautiful sweater um, but obviously this is the same outfit as my earlier video because I'm just filming back to back I am super inspired by a lot of my uh, fellow friends here on YouTube especially the ones that were doing their low buy or no buy last year um, so while I personally cannot do a no buy I can possibly do a low buy but more in in a different way so yeah I thought that I would share them with you just so that um, you guys can kind of hold me accountable or at least I feel like just the fact that someone else knows about my goals can make me um, I don't know make me feel more responsible or more accountable towards myself I suppose I mean in the end these are just things that I'm saying whether I am able to achieve them we'll see but hopefully I can I'm gonna try to be realistic with what I'm saying here and also I think consistent is key consistency is key I think as long as I'm not setting these like super hard to reach goals these are pretty realistic I have luxury goals so anything that's related to shopping luxury and you know those things I also have personal goals so personal development and then of course I also have lifestyle goals um, so let's start off with some luxury oriented goals um, the first thing that I wrote down is that I want to avoid buying duplicate styles this year as you may have noticed last year I got a little bit carried away with buying duplicates of certain styles namely three Coco handles two Gabrielle bags I have uh, three Balmain blazers certain things I think it's obviously okay to buy duplicates i feel like buying duplicates is good sometimes especially if you know that it's a style that works really well for you and that you're gonna recycle through them anyway uh, because you always end up wearing the same thing so that's totally fine what i really want to work harder on this year or at least work on this year because i definitely did not work hard on this last year is that i really want to avoid duplicating styles so like the same style of things even if it's in different colors so uh with the balmain blazers i have three of them uh technically i've only really worn the black one the most i have worn the red one like a couple times because red is such a powerful color that i've only wore it on special occasions such as on new year's or on holidays like that type of thing and then my pink one i hardly wore which also ties in the um anxiety factor of owning something and not really reaching for because while i'm happy that it's in my collection i really am happy that i have all these things in my collection and i really hesitate on selling them by the way i want to talk about that too um i i'm really happy to have these things to have variety so that i can change up the look and everything i'm i'm glad that i'm able to do that but at the same time I could live without as well that's what I'm trying to get to I'm also able to live without I feel like having two of the same style is probably already enough having three is way too much uh, just because two in my mind usually you just need a black or a dark color and you just need a light color that's just how I'm gonna operate this year at least I'm gonna try to um, even if I were to go with a duplicate of the same style it has to be only two and it has to be just like the two main colors that I, I can rotate with depending on what I'm wearing so if I want something dark then obviously black is always a good choice um, and if I want something light then any of the light color or even like a bright red color because I do love wearing red would be fine as well but hopefully it stops there same thing with my cocoa handles my Gabrielle bags um the logo chanel earrings i have several pairs i have duplicates of the gold ones i know it sounds ridiculous to a lot of you and even to myself i know it's i feel ridiculous that's how i'm feeling um so that's why this year one of my biggest goals is to avoid duplicate styles i know that some of you are thinking that i could just sell them which is true you're totally right but at the same time i want to avoid seller's remorse and 
I really do hesitate on selling anything Chanel to be very honest You don't know whether after you sell it whether you're gonna want it again And if you have to rebuy it then the price would have gone up so that's number one number two is the piece that you have right now it's in perfect condition because you know i inspect them really really well before i buy them so you don't even know if you're going to be able to rebuy the same item in the same condition that you liked it's not to say that i will never sell anything that i got from chanel but i do really think really hard before doing it and i really want to take my time let time pass and see if i really don't reach for something then then i might decide and do a really big sort of blog cleanup sale type of thing but at the very moment the one thing I really want to work on is just on avoiding duplicates so, so that's number one on the list so the number two thing on my list is that I want to avoid buying any more luxury brand high heels it's not that I made a huge mistake last year the only luxury pump that I bought last year were the manolo so the red manolo heels however i have not worn them yet they are beautiful and they're such a great pop of color and red is such a neutral for me because i love red so it's not even the color it's just the fact that i don't wear heels i don't wear heels on a regular basis whenever i do wear heels it's for an event and even when I go to an event, I have to bring a change of shoe. I don't actually wear the heel to the event. I wear regular shoes or flats or whatever to the event. I change to my heels at the event. And at the end of the event, I change back into my regular shoes. So it's not like I need to buy any more designer heels because I don't wear them. I don't have any occasions to wear them. And the mistake that I kind of made with the red Manolos that I own that I've never worn actually, aside from trying it out at home, is that the heel height that I bought them in is a walkable heel height. It's kind of like a five centimeter heel height, which is a really great walking heel height for me. Except that I don't ever walk in heels. I either walk in flats or in slides. Um, usually the ones with arch support because i'm not going to repeat about my joint issues here but basically i cannot walk in heels not for a long distance anyway um even a short distance like going to the mall and back that can give me knee pain and hip pain for a whole week so i'm not made for heels i'm not made for walking in heels anymore and i have to remind myself every time i look at those beautiful shoes on other people wearing them that they're just beautiful on them they might look beautiful on me, but I'll never be able to walk in them anyway, so why bother? My next goal, so my third goal, is to avoid or to continue to avoid buying styles that really don't work for my lifestyle. One of the styles would be totes or larger bags. Um, last year, I really did really well at avoiding buying bigger bags. I think the largest bag that I bought last year was the 19 bag, which is... Uh, this a decent size it's not too big so that one i'm not mad at actually i'm really happy about that one but i feel like i i can still get easily crazy about a new release and it happens to be a bigger bag and i'm all over it like in my mind i'm all over it and it drives me nuts but i know that i need to continue avoiding buying those things um the new deauville the the caviar deauville that came out just like the spring pre-fall uh, sorry, sorry the pre the pre spring summer collection is beautiful the gray color one i went to try it on oh it's so beautiful it's so pretty and i love it on others uh karis has a couple of them i love it on her but i just know that for me my lifestyle it will never work I might be able to give myself a thousand reasons as to why I need it and why I, you know, I need to add it to my collection. But at the end of the day, I know that once I get it, I'll have buyer's remorse because I know at the end, deep down in my heart, that I really do not. I, I'm not. It's there's these are some just not suitable for me. Like larger bags, bags that have a lot of zippers to go around. 
um, these things just don't work with for me. Like I, I just need to completely forget about them. Whether they're beautiful, new, great colors, and great combination, I should just not think about them. And it's way easier said than done, believe me, because I literally go crazy every time I see something you know, from a new collection come up, the on the go, the MM size even. Uh, it drove me nuts. It's not even out yet at the time, but it drove me nuts for weeks and I still want to go see it. But deep down, I know that I should avoid these styles because they just simply don't work for me. Black holes don't work for me. The Speedy V doesn't work for me because it's a black hole. Any large size bags just don't work for me. And I'm not saying that I'll never buy a large size bag, but I just don't want to buy any luxury large size bags because they cost an arm and a leg if i'm gonna buy a large size bag sure go buy a nylon one from le sport sack it's totally fine they are about 100 to 200 dollars they're totally affordable they're totally user friendly they're totally durable and they're totally cute so why not just spend the money there instead if I really needed a larger bag for a specific reason. So I shall continue to resist buying anything that do not work for my lifestyle. The last goal and the fourth one in the luxury um, sets of goals that I want to mention is that I want to shop my own closet more. It's definitely possible, I just need to be even more creative with what I already own. And with whatever I want to add on, it has to be something that I don't already own. A few things that can help with my shopping my own closet. Number one, avoid um, fast fashion. I know a lot of people this year, even last year, have started avoiding fast fashion or at least not buying into it so much, which is a goal that I'm setting for myself this year. Um, I love that fast fashion is affordable, but at the same time, they are pieces that do disintegrate faster. Uh, the style comes in just as quick as they go um, because they tend to be trendier pieces and they tend to be not quality pieces, so they don't last and they might not even feel comfortable, so you might not even like wearing them. While I want to avoid fast fashion, I'm not gonna avoid it completely per se. I'm still gonna be shopping at Zara. I'm still gonna shop at Topshop but only for pieces that I know that always worked for me. So for Topshop, their jeans, their denims have always worked for me. So I have no issues buying more of those from Topshop, which is a fast fashion company. But because their jeans really do work for me, they work for my body type and they do last pretty long. Topshop jeans are actually quite decent. So I'm okay with buying jeans from Topshop. Um, I, I wear them all the time, trust me, like the pair that I bought that I showed you guys um, They're called the editor jeans. I wore them to death and I'm still wearing them So that's, you know, along the lines of that, like I'm still avoiding everything else they have But jeans wise, denim wise, even the skirts that they make They actually do fit me really well and they do last so And then with Zara, um, I'm not a big Zara shopper to begin with um, I don't know if you guys have noticed, I don't really do large hauls from Zara, but I do love their blazers. Not every single blazer because some of them are really iffy materials and are not made well at all. But once in a while, they'll come up with a really good quality blazer that looks timeless. Uh, the white one that I have is really nice. Uh, the one that's plaid, kind of oversized, that one's pretty nice too, although the fabric is a little bit, bit more um, stuffy, but it still is a pretty nice blazer that I keep going back to wear. So um, along the lines of that, I think you guys get the idea of what I'm trying to say. Like I'll, I'll avoid acrylic, I'll avoid you know the cheap tops and whatnot, um, and I, I don't like knits from Zara, um, but you know certain items like mostly their their blazers uh select blazers are actually okay i know what you guys are thinking zara and topshop are not even luxury items why am i talking about it in this category it's true but <laughs> here's what i'm gonna say also uh, so while i'm gonna avoid most bulk of the fast fashion in terms of luxury ready to wear i'm also gonna really be nitpicking this 
this year I suppose because a um, couple years back I went a little bit cray cray buying all kinds of Balmain t-shirt all kinds of Balmain blazers and like I said why I love having them because they're gonna be they're gonna stay perfect for a long time because they wear really well they're really good quality and this I love like this this I really love and I just said I'm not gonna buy duplicates but I really want another one of these already but anyway I'll just get another color like a light color and that's it um, but uh, that's what I'm trying to say like I, I want to be really selective I have to remind myself that the more clutter that I get the more anxiety I get and the, the less I'll even see what I already have and the harder it will be to shop my own closet so that's why these goals are so 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 important to me and that's why I wrote them down and I wanted to share with you guys and I hope that even inspire some of you to do the same um, you know this is not a low buy or even no buy list of goals but they are gonna be helpful for anybody who wants to sort of slow down or improve on the shopping and just be more mindful as to what you add to your collection so those were my luxury related goals now i'm gonna share a lifestyle goal and that's only just one and it's something that i came up with just this year so the goal is that i want to plan a getaway vacation it doesn't even have to be a getaway it could just be any sort of vacation with my mom every single year at least once the reason i decided to to have that as a goal starting this year and going forward is because my mom has officially retired her birthday was in december um so the just her birthday just passed and she just turned 65 so she's officially retired or semi-retired she's more free than ever and also she's worked so so hard throughout her life she's always been a very frugal person always putting everybody else first uh, and her needs last and she's she's endured a lot of hardship and hard work and she totally deserves a nice vacation every single year with her daughter and her family uh, obviously it's not it doesn't mean that I'm just just gonna be me and her traveling it could be me and my family traveling with her I've already planned the vacation that we're going to in May uh, so we are going to Honolulu it's her first time going to Hawaii ever she's never been so um, yeah that's one of the goals that I decided to do this year and going forward is to plan a getaway vacation uh, even better if it's somewhere that she's never been so that she can get to see more of the world we're always talking about luxury luxury and buying things and showing beautiful unboxings and all that it's great i have nothing against that but i feel like sometimes um, experiences are even more valuable even though they're not tangible they're way more valuable and especially when you spend it with someone that you love so much they bring you just as much joy if not more life always happens uh, whether good or bad there's always gonna be you know things that you need to do obligations responsibilities but I, f I feel like if you do take the time and the effort to um, consciously plan something that's outside of it that's you know great experiences whether you know whether it's a, a true getaway or or just you know some vacation just get away get away could be just get away from your own city basically it doesn't have to be like a beach vacation it doesn't have to be but as long as it's somewhere that she's never been i feel like you know it's just creating memories finally i want to share two personal goals that i have uh, these were things that i already thought about last year that i wanted to do but now i'm putting it into well paper as well as into videos so that you guys can hold me accountable hopefully I should hold myself accountable but anyway so my first personal goal is that I want to up my exercise game so without going into too much detail I do suffer from a chronic disease a lot of you already know so exercise has never really been uh, something that I did on a regular basis and you could argue that it's unhealthy but at the same time my body just needs to rest a lot basically i can't be constantly on the go and so that's why exercise has been something that's kind of in the back burner i used to exercise a lot like i ask any of my best friends they know that i'm hardcore um and i used to you know we we did whatever we could that was free in school anything from long distance running to aerobics 
to judo to um, swimming, uh, basketball, cycling, um, what else, skating, uh, ice skating, uh, rollerblading, any of those things, badminton, any of anything that was accessible to me back in high school that was complimentary, I do it. I did everything that I can possibly do. I was very conscious about um, being physically strong because I was always a very weak child, uh, wimpy and like had no muscle whatsoever. So I gained a little bit of muscle just from doing all these exercises when I was able to at the time. And I continued that uh, in a more or less fashion up, up until like, um university i've been diagnosed with my condition since 2000 and officially it was 2009 but i started my symptoms in 2008 so ever since then exercise has just been something that's in the back burner it's not anything that i constantly did so it's just whenever i had the energy to do i want to make it realistic for my body obviously it's going to be different for all of y'all but for me, um, what's going to be a really realistic something that I can consistently do and really see myself do is to exercise once a week. And I know it's kind of crazy. It's like, who exercises once a week? Actually, I'm sure a lot of people do. I, I know a lot of people are sedent have sed um, sedentary life, but um, as for me... My type of exercise is like shopping or walking at the mall, but I want to consciously like change into my exercise gear, you know, my exercise clothes, my Nike hat and all that, all that jazz and, and just like exercise one, once a week. Uh, it has to be at least 30 minutes in length, but usually when I do exercise, I end up doing it for an hour anyway you know you add the stretching you add the warm-up you add the getting ready going out and uh you know like all that it's gonna be at least an hour so even if it's just walking outside up the hill and come back down uh, and go around the area that's just that's my exercise that's basically what i want to achieve this year is that i want to be held accountable for every single week i have to do it once once i've done it that week then I can give myself a break. Like I can still do more, but I want to be at least doing it once a week, whether the weather is crappy or not. I want to like at least do that so that I have a little bit of consistency to look forward. An easy goal to, to achieve for a lot of you. And I totally understand that even if, you know, if I heard myself say that when it used to be back then, I'd be like, what are you talking about? I used to exercise like, almost every day, but, um, the fact of the matter is that I have to take care of my body and I have to respect my limits So I know that once a week is doable for me uh, And of course, like I said, it doesn't count the everyday running around That's also exercise, but that's not my um, I didn't intend to like do it like, you know, or, you know what I mean? So like I want to have the intention of like Like really change into the mindset of going for the exercise. So one thing that will actually help me do that, that will help, help me look forward to that is also to listen to audiobooks, which leads me to the second personal goal, which is that I want to consciously read or listen to a book, one book per month. Listening to an audiobook is really easy. You can literally listen to one audiobook in an entire day and be finished with it. But whether you absorb the material and are able to implement the material is another story. Every month I want to finish one book, just one. So it's super realistic, easy, not easy, but super realistic to do as long as I'm consistent. But I want to be able to really absorb the material, Why, whether I'm taking notes or listening to the same book over and over and over especially while i'm exercising i can listen to my audiobook and really take in the information again um and really learn that material and really try to implement the material in the book as well in fact one way of being held accountable for that is to share the main points of the book like almost doing like a summary of the book via videos such as my favorites video maybe that's something that you can look forward to hopefully i will be able to do it so that um 
that would be a really great way of holding myself accountable, wouldn't it be? Because if I don't know what the book is about, then I won't be able to share with you guys, would I be? Um, so yeah, that's definitely my second goal is to really read, digest, and implement ideas in the books that I read. And I usually like to read self-help books. Not that I am miserable or anything, but I just love self-development. I'm fascinated by people who are open-minded. I'm fascinated by just um, looking at things from a different angle or even from a different perspective. I just love absorbing materials like that and that's why I love non-fiction books. Um, that's why I only read those. Uh, I only read fictional books once in a while, like really really once in a bloom, not even that often. It's so easy to find instant gratification, you know, buying this, buying that, unboxing this, unboxing that. These goals seem simple and there's not that many of them to be very honest. Uh, they are hard to implement because instant gratification is always so easy but to be consistent is the hard part. So as long as I'm able to be consistent with these things, then I can be proud of myself at the end of the year. So hopefully I'll be able to do it. I really want to get these things done and I really want to be consistent going forward as well. These goals could be not just for this year, it could be for going forward and the next year I can refine them and add on to whatever I've already achieved or failed on. Let's hope that I don't fail, but like we shall see. Please let me know down below if this has inspired you to create your own sets of rules, I mean goals to, you know, achieve this year. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Let's inspire each other and let's interact in a manner that can support each other. Anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to subscribe, like and comment as usual, and I'll talk to you guys again very soon. Bye!